It's time now for 15 Minutes of Faith, practical application of God's timeless truth for today, with your host, me, Pastor Jeremy Byler of Harvest Baptist Church in Bay City, Michigan. So let's get started with 15 Minutes of Faith. Ministry at Work, Lesson 2, Taking a Stand in the Right Way. Thank you so much for joining us here today. This is 15 Minutes of Faith, and I am your host, Pastor Jeremy Byler of Harvest Baptist Church in Bay City, Michigan, and we're continuing on with our lessons in Daniel entitled Ministry at Work, Finding Your Purpose and Influencing the World for Christ, One Opportunity at a Time. Last week was kind of an introductory episode as we looked at the position Daniel was in and how he was taken away from his home country as a young man, as a as maybe even a teenager, and brought to a place, an unfamiliar situation. And we see that no sooner is he brought over to Babylon, he is forced to make a decision. And the decision is, will or will he not take a stand? And that's what we see in Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. We see him taking a stand the right way, where it says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. That's what we're looking at here. Daniel is faced with the decision, and we can see that there are some principles we can apply to our lives as well. Being part of being a Christian in the workplace Sometimes we have to take a stand. And I know in the day and age in which we live right now, there's a lot of people taking a lot of stands against a lot of different things. So I figured this would be appropriate and something we can look at as well. Is, uh, you know, there are many contrary things happening in society, many uh, divisive things happening in the world in which we live. And us as Christians, we need to really take a look at those through a biblical lens and, and really try to find our place. In order to to do what we need to do is being lights shining in the darkness and advancing the cause of Christ. And that's what we need to really realize and think about. I'm not going to tell you uh, where to stand and which side you should stand on. There's more than enough people doing uh, that these days, especially on the radio or on podcasts or social media. But I will give you some tips in regards to how to stand and an appropriate way to do that. And we see that all through the book of Daniel, is that really, you know, they're not some blazing forerunners going in there, taking charge and uh, causing uh, ruckus and stirring up trouble. No, they're just people that followed God and just allowed God to take care of them. And that's one of the first things we need to realize is that God is in control. God is, has his hands over everything. And he doesn't need us to do his work for him. Instead, we just need to stand and trust in him. So let's take a look at what Daniel did in regards to taking the stand. And first, let's see what the test was. As we see there in Daniel chapter 1, verse number 8, he says, He will not defile himself with the king's meat or the wine which he drank. A lot of discussion in regards to what that means, but uh, at its most elementary form, we know that uh, the Jews at that time were forbidden from eating particular types of meats. Uh, particularly those that uh, had the cloven hoof but did not chew their cud or had the uncloven hoof and chewed their cud. And there were many different rules and regulations that God had for them. And part of that has to do uh, with the cleanliness at that time. He would deem them clean or unclean. And maybe there were health reasons behind it. But also, it was a way to set them apart. Uh, later on, in the days of the New Testament, it was very easy to tell the Jews from the Gentiles during that time because of their dietary restrictions. If someone were to say, you know, I, I am forbidden to eat pork, they would know exactly where they stood. And there's a lot involved in that. And Daniel was faced with the same situation as he headed over to Babylon from the Levitical law, the law of Leviticus, uh, and also in Deuteronomy where they were told what to eat, what not to eat, and really the whole idea of it was to be ye holy, for I am holy. And Now, definitely, uh, what they ate wasn't what made them holy. It was God. But trusting in God and obeying his statutes and judgments was what set them apart as God's people. And in doing so, and getting taken away from uh, Jerusalem into Babylon, I'm sure this was on Daniel's mind. 
understanding what he did or may or may not have known about the Babylonian culture, saying, I know what they eat, and I know what they partake, and I know uh, what I'm going to be faced with when I get over there. And that's where we see in chapter 1, verse 8, where it says, he purposed in his heart. Psalm 119, verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Daniel's stand was founded in the word of God. And that's what we need to do as well. Our stand, our principles, our decisions, everything we do must be grounded in the word of God. Not uh, necessarily founded in our traditions, not in our practices, not in uh, certain things, not in our opinions, uh, not in our politics, not in that. It must be founded in the Word of God. Someone were to ask me, are you a Republican or a Democrat? I, I always tell them I'm a theocrat. Theos, being in God, that I follow God's Word first and foremost before I follow any particular political party. Because either one can do something contrary to Scripture, and therefore I must also take a stand. But we see here that what Daniel purposed in his heart, that he would not, what, defile himself. There was some defilement that was to take place. It was a violation of the commandment of God's word. Some said the Babylonians were known to eat horses um, and pigs, and those animals were forbidden for them to eat. Uh, what's more, as we see with the wine that he drank, we know that some of the wine was offered unto idols. And even the meat probably was offered unto idols as well as they worshipped Baal and Ashtoreth over there. So the idea of him eating and partaking uh, of food or drink that was offered unto idols uh, would be him acknowledging the, uh, or at least giving accreditation to that false god that they worshipped and would show that he would be taking a part of that. But he had purposed in his heart that he would not do that. And he had to take a stand. You see, it was the biblical principle that made the decision for him. And that's what's important, is when we come to a, a, a situation where we find ourselves forced to make a difficult decision, we can always go to the Word of God. And when we run it through the lens of Scripture, when God settles it, that's it. We're on the, we are on the Lord's side. We agree with the Bible every time. And that's what we see here is Daniel did that. Daniel purposed in his heart. Again, that's the one thing you need to do is not say, I need to think about every circumstance and how I'm going to decide. No, you just need to say, I'm going to be a person of the Bible. And God, if your word is against it, so am I. And if you're uncertain, you can pray about it. Ask God for wisdom. His book clearly tells us if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto him. God will give you wisdom. You can seek his word and say, does this violate any biblical principle? And you can say, well, because this goes against the word of God, I cannot go along with it. Because his stand was based on the word of God, and ours should be too. Secondly, we see that Daniel had a good testimony with Melzar, the prince of the eunuchs. He had a good testimony with him. And that tells us that in verse number 9, where it says, Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. You see, we must be willing to have some sort of relationship or good relation with all men of the world. And, uh, you know, some will take that as compromise. Now, again, here's the key. We're standing on the word of God. We're not going to violate biblical convictions. But yet we are to demonstrate the love of Christ to all men. As the saying goes, you have never looked into the eyes of a person that God does not love. And we are to be the light of the world. And, you know, Jesus uh, showed himself friendly, and we must too. And we must demonstrate that love of Christ. And we see that Daniel had a good relationship with Prince of the Eunuchs. And you think about that, we could go over there and, and we see Daniel getting set down and he could throw a fit and say, I know who you are and what you represent and the wickedness that you partake in and that you allow them to, uh, you know, allow their children to pass through fire and offer their children on the altar of sacrifice and so on and so forth. And, and he understood all that, but he was trusting in God and he understood that it was God's provision that he was over there in Babylon on purpose for a purpose. And he was in good favor with the prince of the eunuchs. And because of that, because he had a good testimony with Melzar, he was able to offer a solution of faith. In verse number 10, it says, And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who hath appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse, liking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. 
Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Pulse, in that context, has the idea of fruits, vegetables, and beans or lentils. Has all the supplements and all the nutrients to keep one healthy. And also he asked for water to drink, which is uh, something that we should all do is drink more water. And there's books written actually about the diet of Daniel, and we're not here to talk about that today. But do you see how Daniel had purposed in his heart to honor the word of God? He maintained a good testimony, even with the prince of the eunuchs. And then as he approached that situation, he offered a solution uh, that he could do with the prince of the eunuchs. He says, listen, just feed us uh, pulse for 10 days. And he says, after the 10 days, if, if we don't seem, as the Bible says, fairer and fatter or in, in much better health than those that are eating the king's food, then, well, we'll take it from there. But I know that that's not going to happen because uh, living on this diet, I will be in good shape. I will be healthy. I'll be taken care of. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. Uh, Daniel was in great shape. The men's faces were fairer and fatter than those. And, and the problem was solved. Daniel was able to take his stand. And he did it in a wonderful way, and he did it, and he maintained favor uh, with those around him, which is going to be important. Remember, Daniel was a man of influence, and he is on a path of influence in the land of Babylon in a wonderful way. Uh, His influence would start actually right there with the prince of the eunuchs, and it would go to Nebuchadnezzar, it would go to King Darius, it would go to all the way to King Cyrus. Uh, King Cyrus was the one who made the decree to allow the Israelites to leave Babylon and go back to Israel. And many believe Daniel had his hand in that because of his influence. And yet Daniel was a man of conviction, and Daniel was a man who could take a stand. So that's my challenge to you today, Christian, as we face a society that is very anti-biblical, a society that's trying to erase God from the pages of history and so on and so forth, but yet we are called to shine as lights in the darkness. So here's the thing. Here are the keys to you when you are preparing to take your stand. Purpose before time that you will be a person of the word, that you will hide your word, hide God's word in your heart and not sin against him. Make sure your stand is based on the word. Be willing to communicate. See, every opportunity when you talk about your biblical convictions is an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody may say, well, why do you believe that way? Why do you follow the Bible? What does it mean to follow the Bible? You never know what opportunities may arise when you do things in a Christ-like manner with a Christ-like spirit. Also, be ready for consequences. You know, Daniel made, took that stand and he made that, uh, that proposition to the prince of the eunuchs, uh, simply trusting in God. Later on, uh, we'll see that Daniel and, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be faced again with a, an opportunity to take a stand, and there will be greater consequences than just partaking of the king's meat. But that's another lesson for another day. But you also might want to consider the consequences. And now I'm not saying consider them as to whether you will or will not stand on the word of God, but you need to know really what you're signing up for and stepping into and saying, you know what, I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to follow along with the word of God regardless. But just kind of think about that. And then also continue to walk by faith and guard your testimony. You may be thinking you're taking a wonderful stand in the word of God, And you may be thinking you're doing the Lord's work, but if you are blazing your testimony in the meantime, you are actually doing more damage for the cause of Christ than you are good. Remember, the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Think about that verse. Meditate on it. Put it in your heart as you go to social media and you want to just rip into somebody that has maybe a different uh, opinion than you on a particular subject. Or you really just want to let them have it uh, and and just really put them in their place. No, eh, sometimes you're better off not doing that. And that's not really taking a stand anyways. That's more or less just stirring the pot and causing more trouble. So I hope this was an encouragement to you today. And as you go to your workplace, uh, you may be forced to take a stand. Just keep trusting in the Lord. Hide his word in your heart and trust in him. And he will take you every step of the way. He took care of Daniel. He'll take care of you. So I hope this was an encouragement to you today, and I hope it was a blessing, and I hope you keep joining us for our lessons in Ministry at Work and the Life of Daniel. But until next time, stay faithful.